Uh, good morning, everyone. It's 9.30 sharply. So let's start our Elixir Czech Republic Friday Coffee, where we are presenting uh, tools and services offered by Elixir Infrastructure. Uh, to demonstrate that the portfolio of our services is really large, we will today hear from Vojta Spivak from Institute of Chemical Technology about his uh, tools uh, dedicated, I suppose, for the molecule dynamic simulations of the biomolecules. And this is a really top class uh, tools and Vojta will show us uh, how to use them and where to find them. So Vojta, please, the floor is yours. So, dobré ráno, dámy a pánové. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I will start my presentation with this video where you can see the results of the molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, it is in this project we studied uh, the systems containing a small protein called heavane domain and either mono, di or trisaccharide. And we were very happy to see the, the binding of uh, all saccharides into the binding site. Uh, in uh, the structure which was uh, in the binding mode, which was in a good agreement with NMR structure. And uh, and uh, you can, uh, it somehow implies that it would be possible to use this approach in some structure based uh, drug design. So instead of uh, simulating this heavane domain, we can replace it by some uh, receptor or some enzyme and instead of uh, the saccharide we can uh, place there some uh, potential drug molecule and from the results we can see whether this molecule binds to the target uh, how strongly it binds and in which binding mode but unfortunately this is not so easy because uh, there are because there are uh, uh, this project uh, consumes something like uh, 1000 cpu days and uh, furthermore this uh, heavane domain is quite small uh, molecule and uh, real drug targets are much more complex and the binding and unbinding of real drugs is uh, usually much slower so how we can solve this problem uh, or address this problem. There are many people trying to uh, solve this problem by development of some new special purpose or some unusual hardware. And people are trying to uh, develop some uh, new approaches uh, for running uh, molecular dynamic simulation like faster. And uh, as an alternative, it's possible to uh, run some relatively short simulation, but to learn to, to run them in a way to learn something about long-term behavior of molecular systems. So uh, we can also formulate this problem in a way that there is some energy barrier which causes that the simulated change is slow. So for example, in this binding and unbinding, there is some energy barrier between the bound state and unbound state and crossing of this barrier makes the process slow so uh, it is uh, uh, possible to somehow accelerate this process by making this barrier uh, smaller or even by uh, removal of such a barrier there is also an analogous situation in protein folding where uh, it's possible to fold uh, to, to uh, simulate folding of some small fast folding proteins but for some uh, real proteins uh, again we are uh, in a bad situation because uh, the simulations are computationally expensive and again this is again because of some uh, uh, energy barrier which must be crossed from between the folded and unfolded state so we can somehow try to remove or uh, reduce this energy barrier and uh, the method that we use mostly is called metadynamics it was developed by Alessandro Laio and Michele Parinello in 2002 and here you can see the demonstration of metadynamics algorithm 
on a model energy surface, which is one of stages of Giro d'Italia bicycle race. So when we start from the uh, local energy minimum, which is uh, this, this somewhere in the middle of the race, uh, then it, by classical molecular dynamic simulation, we would stay trapped in this state, but using metadynamics, we can flood this uh, energy minimum. Metadynamics floods it by depositing some small Gaussian hills, and these Gaussian hills form a bias potential, which floods this minimum, as you have seen. So the system can escape this minimum and can get to the global minimum. And by flooding, flooding the global minimum, it can return back to the uh, original minimum. Uh, it sounds like kind of cheating because in classical molecular dynamic simulation, we have only forces coming from uh, covalent and non-covalent interactions. And here we have some additional artificial forces. So indeed, the system behaves in a different way than in reality. But from this uh, behavior of the system, we can reconstruct how the system behaves in the real reality. So how we do that? Uh, so here, if this uh, energy minimum here is very deep, it was necessary to add some uh, high amount of bias potential. Uh, and here, if this energy minimum is shallow, it was necessary to add just few uh, amount of bias potential to flood it. So um, from the amount of bias potential, we can uh, predict the free energy of a corresponding uh, state. So we can predict how stable is the uh, state corresponding to certain minimum. And uh, we can predict uh, some thermodynamics and kinetics of the simulated uh, system. Uh, the program which is mostly used for metadynamic simulation is Plumed. It is a very nice uh, plugin which can be plugged into uh, different uh, simulation codes. And you can run simulation, uh, metadynamic simulation or some other uh, similar techniques using this uh, excellent plugin. So our tools that uh, I will show in the next few slides, they can use the, the output files coming from this plumed package. And here, just to show some example of metadynamic simulation, this is uh, uh, applied in some mini protein folding that we combined metadynamics with a neural network, uh, artificial neural network. So the idea was that uh, uh, proteins, if they are folded, they have a low uh, access, solvent accessible surface or molecular surface area. If they are unfolded, their uh, uh, molecular surface area is much higher. So the idea was to uh, use metadynamics to drive the uh, protein to uh, fold and unfold via uh, forcing it to go to uh, low or high uh, molecular surface area. And uh, because calculation of molecular surface area is quite uh, computationally expensive, we pre-calculated it on some series of structures and then we use these structures to train the neural network and then we were able to approximate uh, molecular surface area using a neural network and uh, this here you can see these free energy surfaces uh, so this minimum uh, at the low molecular surface area and uh, some moderate helicity is the folded structure so it's like global minimum at uh, low temperatures and at higher temperatures the, the unfolded state which is the uh, long uh, long minimum with uh, almost zero helicity became uh, dominant at, at higher temperatures. So uh, I will talk about uh, our tools which can be used to analyze uh, the results of metadynamics. So if you run metadynamic simulation, you got some record of uh, hills which were deposited and which form the bias potential. And basically what these tools do is that they sum up uh, these hills to make some kind of estimate of the free energy surface. And when I, uh, when my student 
former PhD student Petr Hošek started to work with metadynamics, he asked me uh, to give him uh, some uh, programs which I made for uh, for analyzing these simulations and uh, he was quite unhappy with them so he wrote his own tools and he made such a nice uh, uh, like a website where you can upload uh, your uh, data from metadynamics here you can play the uh, press the play button and then you can see the progress of metadynamics uh, of the flooding and you can somehow uh, return back you can uh, export uh, images and you can do some basic measurements in, in this. So here you, you can find it at the website metadynamicschd.cz uh, and you can upload your, your uh, metadynamics data and you can visualize it this way. Uh, a quite nice feature of this uh, uh, viewer is that it's very fast and this is because like uh, most of tools use some, uh, they, uh, they evaluate uh, the Gaussian function for each Gaussian hill and this bias potential is usually composed of thousands of hills so it can be pretty slow so in this tool uh, Petr wrote it in a way that uh, uh, this, this tool first uh, calculates one hill and then just copies and pastes it to its location to, to uh, make such a free energy surface. Um, we followed this uh, idea in uh, the package, which is called Metadin Miner. It is the art, uh, R package. So if you have R program, you can easily install it and use it. So you can use it to read hills, hills files from Plumed, either one dimensional or two dimensional. So you use some uh, one or two uh, some descriptors of the system to apply bias potential on. It is possible to also visualize three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional files um, in Metadin Miner 3D, which I will show uh, in the next slide. Um, I would say that some 99% of metadynamics applications. Uh, use either one-dimensional or in most cases two-dimensional and some of them also three-dimensional but uh, using more uh, descriptors to apply bias potential on is usually uh, recognized as uh, inefficient. So if you read these Hills files you can calculate free energy surfaces. You can do it by this fast algorithm or by a conventional algorithm. Um, you can do different operations with free energy surfaces, so you can add them, subtract them, uh, multiply or divide them by a constant, so you can easily uh, by one command convert from uh, kilojoules to kilocalories per mole. You can calculate minima, maxima and do some other, uh, other operations. You can of course plot them, so here you see the plot of uh, the free energy surface. Because it's in R, you can use different R tricks to make some high quality publication quality uh, images. Uh, using some loops, you can uh, easily make some movies. Uh, there is a feature which can find minima, so here you can see minima A, B, C, D, E identified automatically by the program. Uh, you can also somehow check kind of convergency. So uh, usually, like if you calculate the free, free energy difference between minimum A and minimum, for example, D, this should converge to uh, one value during the simulation. So you can check whether it converges or not. You can uh, convert such a two-dimensional free energy surface into one-dimensional by integrating out one of these uh, dimensions and you can also use the method which is called notched elastic band to find the transition path between uh, one minimum and another minimum so it, uh, it finds like the most favorable path between these two minima. If you are interested in, in this package you can read our uh, preprint, we have submitted it to our journal, which is extremely slow. 
so uh, in maybe next uh, months or years it will be uh, somehow accepted. We have also made, because there was some demand from the community, uh, the version which can uh, visualize also three-dimensional potentials. Uh, so you can uh, here you can see the example, and this uh, in R you can uh, rotate it, zoom zoom in, zoom out, and do some other uh, like operations. Because it's uh, in R, you can use some other R packages. So just to show some examples. Uh, we were able to use another R package, which can take the uh, uh, R matrix and convert it to a 3D model, which can be then printed on a 3D printer. So we were uh, able to 3D print uh, su such free energy surface. And uh, th these examples are when I was submitting this uh, package to R, uh, there are some uh, like curators who manually check uh, all these packages and when i was waiting in a queue for uh, this this package being checked uh, i mentioned that there is some package which is called harry potter so i look what is the harry potter package r package about and i found that somebody took some movies about harry potter they identified uh, some colors characteristic for different uh, characters of the movie and they made some kind of like a scale, color scales or color palettes for uh, different characters of a Harry Potter movie. So if you like, if you don't like such a boring blue, green, red uh, scales, you can plot your free energy surface in colors of your favorite, I don't know, Hobbit or whatever. And uh, because we are aware of the fact that uh, not all people, especially in bio, in, uh, in, in uh, metadynamics community and in uh, molecular biophysics community, uh, are fans of R. I would say that more people in this area are like Python oriented. So we decided to make this available also in some uh, like a more friendly way. So we made uh, this. Uh, a tool called uh, Metadin Reporter, which is based on Galaxy. So it's like Galaxy instance in which we installed Metadin Miner. And we also use package R Markdown, which is something similar to, if you are familiar with Python, it's uh, similar to Jupyter Notebook, uh, kind of similar idea that you can do kind of like reports. Uh, so it's kind of a reproducibility package. So uh, users can uh, uh, register to this uh, Galaxy instance. They can uh, they can uh, upload the the data, uh, and then you press submit, and it will make the analysis, and uh, it you will at the end obtain the the report in the form of PDF file. So you can you can uh, either export these free energy surfaces and you have also some some comments and detailed explanation what is what is uh, what where the analysis is done uh, this uh, is kind of very basic uh, uh, basic analysis so in future we are of course open to other users of metadynamics uh, if they have some idea how to uh, Im uh, improve this uh, this uh, report or how how to add some other features or how to make some some other reports we are of course open to uh, modify them and to add some new features so that's all i would like to thank my colleagues uh, from the University of Chemistry and Technology in Prague, uh, Dalibor Trapper and Petr Hošek, who contributed to both uh, packages, uh, Czech Science Foundation and uh, Ministry of Education for support, Metacentrum for hosting, uh, Metadin Reporter, Plumed people for making such a nice uh, package, Plumed, and of course, Elixir, the Czech Republic note. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much for a very interesting lecture on the on the tools.
Uh, I probably have the first question, and the question is, what was the size of the largest molecule you actually applied your tools on, and what are usually the cases you are applying uh, the, the methodology you just showed? You mean like uh, some uh, protein folding? Yeah, uh, so or probably something like uh, antibodies or receptors or interaction where you usually apply that techniques in terms of the portfolio or the possibilities? So we are uh, currently, we have tried some uh, receptor ligand interactions like with GPCR uh, or uh, we are uh, now trying uh, uh, some uh, uh, like a um, translation initiation uh, complex uh, with uh, some peptide ligand, so these are probably the the, the largest complexes. I would say that, uh, like uh, in a protein folding, yeah, there is a there is a kind of limitation uh, that uh, mm, it's uh, very difficult to uh, like. Uh, it, I, as I mentioned, this metadynamics works very well if you have some few. Uh, descriptors on which you apply this artificial potential uh, so usually one or two or three but most in most cases two and it's very difficult to uh, somehow describe some complex uh, conformational change such as protein folding using just two numbers so we are trying some uh, like uh, 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 machine learning or some uh, dimensionality reduction techniques to somehow uh, somehow address this problem and for uh, for protein ligand interaction which is another field uh, i think that the situation is much more favorable so uh, yeah. again there could be some hidden degrees of freedom which is which are difficult to be addressed by metadynamics but uh, in general it's it's more more favored for such simulations. Thank you. Kara is asking if it's possible to prepare some starting metadynamics profiles, for example, from other calculation that would be refined by a metadynamics later. Uh, you, uh, you mean for, uh, for example, uh, basically to jumpstart the simulations, if that is somehow possible to prepare with, me, with any tools. Uh, uh, no, I would say no. Uh, we we don't. Uh, we we just analyze the existing simulations. So we can think about it. So to make some uh, some tools which can somehow optimize uh, the choice of uh, uh, collective variables. For example, there are some approaches available for this. Uh, there is some works, for example, from Pratyush Tivari on. Uh, making some uh, uh, sophisticated uh, collective variables based on many collective variables uh, tested during a, an unbiased simulation. There are some, uh, some, uh, sim some approaches from uh, Francesco Gervasio. We can, we can uh, try to uh, think about it like to to combine them to, to make not only analysis but also some setup okay andrea has a last question can metadyna metadyne minor 3d integrate out a collective variables from 3d hails file as well as at present time uh i'm not sure i'm i will have to check it i i i know definitely that there is possibility to make a, 2D to 1D, but I'm not 100% sure that we can make uh, 3D to 2D. But I will, uh, I will check it, and if it's not available, I will edit this feature because it's, it's, uh, it could be quite useful. Yeah, very, very nice idea. Good. And the question from Marek is: Would it be possible to find the point of contact of protein and DNA using this approach? I suppose there is a kind of the blind shot on the DNA. Can metadynamics help? So it's uh, uh, if, if uh, somebody wants to uh, simulate the process of binding of uh, DNA with a protein, uh, 
uh, it's in principle possible. Uh, so it's kind of similar situation with uh, protein ligand binding with this uh, little complication that there are two quite big molecules interacting, not big one with small one. So I think in principle, yes. And I don't know how uh, I'm not big expert in, uh, in like protein DNA interaction. I don't know whether uh, these proteins first bind to DNA and then they somehow slide on it to find uh, the best place. This would be quite elegant uh, task for metadynamics if it works other way around that they really bind to, to uh, the, the recognized place and not to other sites, then it would be a little bit more difficult. Wojta, thank you. And I think this was the last question. So thank you, Wojta, again. And see each other next Friday on IC Friday's Coffee. And thank you for your attention. Bye.